This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. If you're interested in learning web development, iOS, or UX design, Dev Mountain is a 12 week design and development boot camp intended to get you a full time position in the industry. To learn more, visit devmountain.com or click the link in the description below. Hey guys, welcome to a crash course on service workers and caching. So service workers are becoming a huge part of modern web development, especially in the area of progressive web apps or PWAs, um, which are applications that that work like more like native apps than web apps. Um, now, you can do a lot of things with service workers. You can have offline content loading, which is uh, very popular with PWAs. Also, push notifications. Um, there's, there's something called background sync. In this particular tutorial, we're going to first just talk about the basics of service workers and establish what they are, talk about some of the events in the API, and then we're going to jump in and we're going to take a simple website, add a service worker to it that will cache all the pages so that if a user was viewing the site and their connection went out, so if they had no internet, uh, the pages would still load. Okay, so that's going to be the focus of this crash course. And it's going to be very, very basic. Um, service workers are kind of difficult to wrap your head around. So I'm going to try to explain things the best that I can. And I'm not going to use any third party libraries. I'm not going to use like Workbox or anything like that, which are really cool uh, uh, tools. But I want this to be as vanilla as possible. All right, so what is a service worker exactly? It's, it's just a JavaScript file. It's a single file that gets registered with the browser and stays with the browser even when you have no internet connection. So this means if someone is viewing your website or your application and their connection goes out, they're still going to be able to get that information. And this is a huge requirement of progressive web apps because it makes it seem more like a native app. Um, now, usually when you go to your browser, you enter a URL for a site, the browser fetches it and the remote server returns that information to you. But when you have a service worker registered, it, it, it basically adds another step to the process. The service worker kind of jumps in the middle and it can intercept the request and then decide what should happen. Okay, so it, should, it decides what can happen with that request in terms of showing the remote version or showing an offline version or whatever it is you want to do. And um, doing this can prevent that that really ugly not found it not not the 404 pages uh, but you know the default browser page when your when your internet goes out so you can even have like custom offline pages if you want if you're not going to cache the entire site in general um, so some other facts about service workers they they can't directly access the dom the document object model instead they communicate with uh, with the pages it controls by responding to messages sent by something called the post message interface and those pages can then manipulate the DOM if needed but it doesn't access it directly. Uh, a service worker is a programmable network proxy that allows you to control how network requests from your page are handled. Um, service workers are terminated when they're not being used and then they're restarted when they're needed again. Uh, they also make use of ES6 promises, so you'll be seeing a lot of dot .then, dot .catch. Um, and then uh, a really important part of service workers, or, or a really important piece of information to know, is that you need HTTPS unless you're on, on a local environment and you're using local host. Okay, so if you upload to a remote server, make sure that it has HTTPS installed and enabled. So most commonly, service workers are used for offline browsing and, and caching assets and API calls. But uh, notifications are also a big part of service workers. Those are the, you know, the little notifications that some websites have that will pop up on your desktop or on your mobile device. And they're really great for marketing and, and advertising and so on. And I did do a course on push notifications and, and Node.js. Um, using service workers. I think it was about two months ago that I did it. If I remember, I'll put the link in the description. Um, there's also something called background sync, which isn't still isn't fully supported in all browsers. Uh, but this is a new API that lets you defer actions until the user has a stable connection. Okay, so if a user, for instance, likes a post on a social network, um, this is a case where something needs to be sent to a server, which isn't possible without a connection. But with this 
browser sync API, it allows that action to be deferred or basically put on hold in the cache until connectivity is restored and then that post will get liked. Okay, so if you've ever used the Instagram mobile app, it works in a very similar way when it's offline. Now, service workers have something called a life cycle, and this is a, this is a very simplified diagram that I created. But basically, the first step is to just register the worker. Um, then you can install it by triggering the install event and then activate it using the activate event. After that, it can receive message events and functional events such as fetch, which we'll be using. Um, and then you also have push for push the push notifications and then sync for the background sync API. All right. And, and this stuff will make more sense when we get into it, when we start to work with these events. Now, as far as browser support goes, service workers are supported in all major browsers, not Internet Explorer, but all normal browsers. However, the background sync API is not supported in Edge or Safari yet, as far as I know. Uh, but it shouldn't be long for them to adapt. All right, so enough with the slides. Let's go ahead and jump in and let's take a website. Let's add a service worker to it so we can cache it and we can have offline viewing of the pages. All right, guys, so we're going to get started now. I just have a very simple website that we're going to be working with. So we have a, a, just a simple index page and a simple about page and a CSS file with just a little bit of styling in it. So let's take a look at it. So I'm going to I'm going to be using Live Server, which is an extension for VS Code. You can install by clicking on the extensions icon and searching for Live Server and installing it. And then you can simply say open with Live Server and it'll open on your local host on port 5500 by default. So this is the our very simple website and the idea for this is that we want these pages to be available even if the user's connection drops, okay? Um, and we're going to do that by create registering a service worker and also working with the cache. So I'm going to be opening my Chrome tools. We're going to we're going to work in here quite a bit. Let me just clear this cache out real quick. Um, all right. So just make sure, okay. So right now we have nothing, no service worker registered. All we have is the files I showed you. We do have a JS, a main JS file, which has nothing in it. This is where we're going to register the service worker file. Okay, so I'm going to create a file in the root directory. This is going to be our service worker. I'm going to call it SW underscore and let's call it uh, cached. We'll say cached underscore pages dot JS. All right, so this is the actual service worker, but we have to register it elsewhere. Now you could do it in your HTML files, but you would have to put it in every single HTML file since the main JS is actually included in both HTML files. That's where I'm going to register it. Okay, so we're going to go into main and the first, very first thing you want to do is make sure service workers are supported. And we can do that with a simple if statement. And we're just going to say if inside quotes service worker in and then navigator. Okay, navigator is basically like the browser object. You can also do if navigator dot service worker. Okay, because it's attached to that object. So let's just do a quick console log just just to make sure I'm using Chrome. So obviously it is. Um, uh, it is enabled, but we'll just go ahead and, and do this anyway. So we'll say service worker uh, supported. OK, so we'll save that. Let's go to our browser and we get service worker supported. Good. Now we'll go back. We can get rid of this log and we're going to register it. Now we want to register it when the window loads. OK, so in JavaScript we, and in the browser, we have a window object. And we're going to call an, uh, an event listener on it with add event listener. We want to listen for the load event. And then this is going to take a callback. You could put a function like this, but I'm going to be using ES6 arrow functions. So I'm just going to put a set of parentheses and then an arrow and then some curly braces. And then in here we want to take that navigator object and we want to say dot service worker. You can see I'm getting some drop downs in VS code here and we want to register it with dot register. So I'm going to go on a new line and say dot register. 
and then we want the file name. Now, since the, the file, the, red, the service worker file is outside of the JavaScript folder where we currently are, we have to do a dot dot slash and then the name, which is SW underscore cached underscore pages dot JS. Okay, once we do that, that's going to give us a promise back. So we say dot then it'll give us a registration object. And I'm just going to go ahead and console dot log here. And again, I'm using arrow functions, but you don't have to. And let's just say here uh, service worker and we'll say registered like that. All right. And then if there's some if something goes wrong, then that'll be in the dot catch. Okay, that's how promises work. Um, so in here, let's just uh, it's going to give us an error. And I'm just going to console dot log. I'm going to put in back ticks here instead of single quotes because I want to include that error variable. So I'm going to say service worker and let's say error colon and then to put a variable in with with a template string, we can just go like that and we can simply put in the error variable that it gives us back right here. And that's it. That'll register the worker. So if I save this and we go to Chrome, you'll see service worker registered. Okay, and if we go to our application tab and go to service workers, you're going to see it here. And it says SW offline pages .js, That's the name of the file um, activated and running. It's actually waiting to activate. Um, so just ignore that. If you see that for now, we're going to take care of it. And then this update on reload, make sure that this is checked because you want to force the update on page reload. So let's go back to VS Code now and let's head into our service worker. And in here, let's see, we're going to let's call the install event. So I'll say call install event. And to do that, we need to attach an event listener to the actual worker. And we can do that by saying self dot add event listener. And we want the install event. And that we get a callback here. You can use function if you want. But again, I'm using arrow functions. And this takes in an event parameter. So you want to pass in E or you can do event or whatever you want to do. But I like to use just E. And then let's do a console dot log here. And let's say service worker. And we'll say installed and this should have quotes around it. Sorry. Okay, so we'll save that and let's go back to Chrome. And now you can see it says activated and running. And if we go to our console, if I reload, it'll it, you might see it flash the installed message. See that flash. If you want to actually see it, you can go to the little gear and preserve your console log and then reload. And now you'll see the service worker installed. Okay, so it just gets installed really quickly and it just flashes, but you can see it if you preserve your log. So that part's done, at least the in the install. We have to do some stuff in here, but at least we have the event. Let's now call the activate event. Actually, I'll just copy this here and let's say call activate event. So this will be activate. And then we'll say service worker activated. Okay, remember that life cycle I showed you in the slides. We have the register, which happens here, and then we have the install and then the activate. Okay, so if we take a look at that, and there's certain things you do in certain areas, and so or I should say in certain events. So if we preserve the log and reload, you'll see installed and activated. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and uncheck that. And everything should still be OK here. Good. Now, this is another tab we're going to be paying attention to cache storage. When we actually do cache something, it's going to be put into here and then we'll have access to this even if the connection drops and there's no Internet connectivity. And that's that's the beauty of of working with service workers and cache. And that's why it's important for progressive web apps, because you want them to work more like native apps. 
Um, and in most native apps, even if the connection drops, it doesn't just go blank. It doesn't do this. If I check offline and I reload, we get this. Okay, and this this is a this will simulate um, offline, you know, for the, if the connection had dropped. All right, so let's go back to our service worker file. And now we're going to think about caching. So we're going to cache all of our pages. We're going to need the assets and the actual HTML pages. And I'm going to give you kind of two ways to do it. First, I'm going to show you how to cache the individual pages, and then I'm going to show you how to actually cache the entire response that we get. Okay, so the, the entire website or page. Um, so let's create a variable up here. We're going to call it cache name. That variable can actually be whatever you want. This can also be whatever you want, but a lot of times you'll see like V1 for version one because you might have different different sets of caches and you want to keep track of them. So we'll call this V1. Then we need to create a variable of assets. So we'll say cache assets, and this is going to be an array of all of our pages. So we have index dot HTML. We have about.html. Okay, we have a CSS file which is in the CSS folder. So CSS slash style.css. And then we have our JavaScript file. So let's say slash JS slash main.js. So those are the assets that we want to cache. Um, and there's there's not a lot in this little website, so this is a, a, a fine method to do this. But if we had a ton of pages, then we might want to do the second thing I'm going to show you, which is basically just taking the entire response and caching it. Uh, but for now, we're just going to do this. And then in the install event is where we want to handle caching these assets. So I'm going to go under this console log. I'm going to leave the console logs just to kind of map what's going on. But under here, we want to say E, we want to take that event parameter and we want to call wait until. Okay, which basically is just telling the browser to wait until our promise is is finished until it uh, it, it it gets rid of the service worker. Um, so in here, we're going to be using the caches storage API. So we're going to say caches dot open, which opens a cache. I'm just going to put this on a new line. So it opens a cache and we want to pass in our cache name that we defined above. Okay, now once we open it, it's going to give us a promise. So we want to do dot then it'll give us a cache object and then we want to take that and I'm actually going to put some curly braces here because I want to do a console log just to to kind of map what's going on. We're going to say from the service worker. So whoops. So why do I keep forgetting these quotes? So from the service worker, let's say caching files, okay? Because that's what we're going to do, and we're going to take that cache object and we're going to call a method called add all. And inside here, we want to place in our assets that we want to cache, which is cache assets. That's the array. Sometimes you'll see people just put the the array directly in here, but I like to define a variable up here and then put it in. And then we just want to add another dot then. So when everything is all set, we can skip waiting. So we can just do a function in here. I'm going to use an arrow and we can say self dot uh, skip waiting like that. Okay, so that should actually put the files in the cache. So I'm going to save this and let's head over to Chrome. And it already reloaded, but I'll just go ahead and reload again. And now notice that down here under cache storage, there's an arrow. And if I click that, we'll see our version one. And if I go on that, it's going to show us all the files that have been cached, which is basically our entire website, the HTML, the CSS and the JavaScript it gives us the content type, the size and the time or the time it was cached. And it's now there for offline viewing. Now we haven't set up that part yet. Um, if I were to click offline here and reload, we're still going to get this this here. I mean, we can play this this cool little game here. I know this is this is hours of fun, but, um, you know, it does get old after a while. So we're probably going to want to show the website. <laughs> so let's go back and where we want to do this is in the fetch event. Okay, um, but 
actually before we do the fetch event let's use our activate in the activate is where we want to clean up any old cache so if i change this to like v2 actually i'll show you real quick if i change it to v2 and i save it and we go and we run this we reload and let's look in cache storage and we have v1 and v2 in here all right so what we want to do is is we want to um get rid of any unwanted caches so that's that's where we do we do this in the activate event so under this console log let's say remove unwanted caches um so again we're going to do our e dot wait until and in here we're going to say caches dot keys So what the what we're doing here is we're going to loop through the caches and we're going to have a condition that basically says if the current cache isn't the cache that we're looping through the current iteration then we want to delete it okay um so to do that we do a dot then here because this gives us a promise the cache.keys and in here we're going to say cache names okay so for each one we'll call this cache names and we're going to actually have to return a we're going to do promise dot all and inside here we're going to take the cache names so cache names and we're going to map through them okay map is just a, a high order function included in in vanilla javascript and then for each one we'll call it cache and let's put an arrow function here and let's do a conditional so we'll say if let's say if the cache is not equal to the cache name okay so basically if the current cache we're looping through is not equal to whatever we have here in this case v2 I'm actually going to change it to v1 uh then what do we want to do we want to delete it so i'm going to put a console.log here and i'm going to say let's see service worker let's say service worker and we'll say clearing old cache okay and to do that we simply need to return caches.delete okay it has a delete method and we want to pass in whatever the current cache is as long as it's not equal to the cache name which is the the current cache we're dealing with okay and you could use filter here as well but um it's fine i'm just going to do it this way so let's go ahead and save that and it, it reloads automatically with live server so i shouldn't have to reload and you can see that now v2 is gone now if i and see the v1 here if i go and change this to v2 and save and we go back now v2 is there and v1 is gone and if we want to look at the console log we'll preserve the log and reload we'll see installed caching files actually we don't see the message that it's getting rid of the old cache because i didn't switch it but if i go ahead and switch it back to v1 and save now you'll see right here clearing old cache Okay. Um so that's that takes care of that. Now we need to be able to show uh our cached files if we're offline. So that happens in the fetch event. So let's say call fetch event. And we're going to say self. add event listener and we want to listen for fetch. So whenever the request is made, this should fire off. um and we can intercept it however we want that's remember i showed you the the image of the service worker in between chrome and the server that's that's what what we can do here um so we're going to pass in a callback with an event parameter and let's just do a console.log i know there's a lot of console logs but i want you guys to see the process of how everything works so let's say service worker and we'll say fetching and then we want to first check if the live site is available if not then we want to load the cached site so we say e.respond with and in here we're going to do fetch which I'll put this on a new line so in here let's say fetch 
and what we want to fetch is the initial request. So we can get that with the event parameter dot request. All right. Now, if the if there's no connection, then this is going to fail. And since this returns a promise, if it fails, then it's going to be in the dot catch. Okay. Now, if there is a if there's a dot catch, then we want to put a function in here. I'm going to use an arrow and I'm going to say caches dot match. Okay. So basically what I want to load from the cache and I want to put an e dot request and this will be from the cache. So the files, uh, whatever we're looking for, such as index HTML about HTML, it'll load it from the cache with this this dot match method. Okay, so hopefully this works. Let's go ahead and save it and let's go back to Chrome and we'll reload. Whoops, I spelled fetch wrong. Of course I did. Uh, things are going too good. So fetch and let's reload here. Okay, and let's unpreserve the log so we don't have all this crap here. And then we'll go to our application and let's look at service workers and let's look in the cache. We still have all of our files here. Now, since we have that fetch event, you can see it says fetching right here. Um, we should be able to see the site even if we're offline. So let's go to service workers and check offline and reload. And there it is. Okay, so we're, we're technically offline right now. Now, if this This is what's being served. It's not coming from the server, so it doesn't matter if our connection drops. All right, so let's go ahead and put this back online and reload. And now we're back online. All right, so that's that's one way to do it. I don't know why this tab is open. Um, now, like I said, if you want to cache the entire response, you can do that. But you do that in the actual fetch. because you need to first fetch the response and then cache it as opposed to, you know, doing it up here in the install. So I'm going to create a, a brand new file here in the root. So a new service worker, I'm going to call it SW underscore cached instead of a cached pages. Let's call it cached site dot JS because that's essentially what we're doing is um, caching the whole site. And I'm going to let's see, how do I want to do this? Um, well, I guess we'll copy what we have here and paste that in, except we don't need the cached assets. We do want a cache name. In fact, I'm going to call this V2 and then in the install, I'm not going to do the caching here. So I'm going to get rid of this, this, this wait until I'm still going to leave the event here like that, but not, I'm not going to do anything in it. Activate is going to stay the same because we still want to clear any old cache, but we want to do the, the, the real work down here in the fetch. Okay, so we're going to have a respond with just like we did before. Uh, let's see. Let's just clear this. So we'll say respond with and then we want to fetch our initial request. So e dot request. Okay, and then that will return a promise. So we'll do dot then and then we'll get our response. And then what we need to do here is basically make a copy of the response that we get from the server. So let's say make copy or it's actually a clone. So make copy clone of response and we can do that by creating a variable. We're going to call it res. clone and I'm going to just set it to res and there's actually a method called clone. Okay, so we want to set it to that. Um, then we want to open a cache just like we did before in the install, except we're doing it down here. So we want to call dot open and we want to open cache name, which we defined above. And then that gives us um, a promise. So dot then and we get our cache object just like before. I'm going to set that to a set of curly braces and here we want to add the response to the cache. So we're going to say cache dot put 
Okay, so we use this put method. We take the initial response, which are the initial request, which is e dot request. And then we want to put in res clone, which is our copy that we made up here. Okay, so res clone. And then we just want to return the original response. So down here, um, let's see, we want to go under right here and just return res like that. Now, if the connection drops, then this dot catch is going to run and we should have our response inside of the cache right at this point. Uh, so what we can do is this will give us an error and I'm just going to do a, an arrow function and we can say um, not catch caches or yeah, caches dot match. And we just want to put the e dot request because right now it should be in the cache. As long as the user went to the site once, then it should be in the cache. And this will have a dot then because this returns a promise. And we simply want to return the response. And uh, since we're using the arrow functions, we can just do it like that. If you're using regular callbacks and you just want to return res, uh, but that should be good. Let's save this. And now if we go back to our browser and look in our cache storage, you'll see we have our index HTML that we're currently on, plus the assets, the style sheet and JavaScript that that go with it. Um, now, the about isn't here because we haven't visited it yet. So if I click on about, that'll automatically get pushed to cache. Okay, because remember, when we make the, the, the fetch, in this case, we just made a, a request to or a fetch to the about, it's going to make a copy of it and put it into the cache. And now whenever you're offline, you should still be able to access those pages and those assets. All right, so now what I want to do is test this out. So I'm going to push to GitHub. Okay, so we're going to use GitHub pages. So let's go to github.com and The simplest way to use GitHub pages is just creating a repository with your username. So mine is Brad Traversy and then you want to do dot GitHub dot IO like that. And I'll just say test website uh, and we'll create a repository. Okay, so now I'm not going to like go over the, the, the basics of Git or anything like that. I'm just going to push this to it so we can test it out. Um, so if you're learning about service workers, I'm guessing that, you know, Git. so let's just get a knit and let's, uh, let's add all, and then we'll make a commit. Okay. So now that we did that, let's add the remote repository. So I'm just going to copy this right here and Paste that in there. Sorry if you guys can hear that banging outside I'm doing construction. Uh, what else we want to do our initial push. So I'll grab that. And let's push. Okay. Uh, Jesus freaking banging. So if I reload this now we have our repository here. So let's head to that actual domain, which is going to be Brad And here's our website. And let's open up Chrome tools. And you can see we have our cache site here. And if we look in, let's see, I'm going to just reload this. And if we look in our cache storage, we have our index, which is slash we have our CSS JavaScript. If I go to about that gets put in the cached. Um, now I'm, I'm actually going to test this by shutting off my internet connection. So I'm on a Mac. I'm just going to go up and, and this is connected through Wi-Fi. So I'm going to turn my Wi-Fi off and let's try it out. We'll reload and we still see the site go to about. It's still there. Okay. And just to prove to you, if I go to like, uh, let's go to YouTube, no connection, Gmail, no connection, you to me, no connection. And our site works. All right. So this was this was a very basic tutorial and introduction to service workers. 
Um, like I said, there's libraries like Workbox that, that make this stuff a little bit easier, but my goal was to give you a tutorial on basically on just vanilla service workers and just how to um, register them, call the install and activate uh, events, and then fetch something and put it into the cache. That, that was the goal for this video, and I think we did that. So hopefully this helps you guys out. I will be doing more advanced stuff on service workers in the future, including building a uh, progressive web app with probably with React. Um, also thinking about doing one with Vue.js. But hopefully you guys like this. If you did, please hit that like button, and I will see you next time.